Hello, my new family. How are you doing today? For those of you that are new to my channel, my name is May. I'm a licensed counselor with a YouTube channel. So today, I have something that's really been on my mind for a really long time that I've been wanting to share, but I think I've just never been able to find the words to to sh to be able to share that or to feel like I was accurately sharing that and as I usually do like I I listen to a lot of people speak I'm one of those people that really loves TED talks and things like that and today it just kind of clicked for me a few things clicked for me actually I okay <clears throat> so I recently my 20s are gone and I recently came out of my 20s this year and I found that one of the things that I was thinking to myself quite frequently when I think about it is I was I kept asking myself the question am I where I want to be for someone that is that is coming out of being out of their 20s you know and, and I found myself asking the question of I don't know if this happened to any of you but I find myself asking the question, did I do what I wanted to do? Was I happy? Did I, did I accomplish the things that I wanted to do? And I would ask myself the, those type of questions more and more as my birthday approached. It was so weird, right? So my path has been, in my opinion, uh, it's been a very uh, interesting path, very stressful, and it was not easy for a personality like mine. And the reason why I feel like I died and then started living is because I feel like I had to die in order to start living, in order to be able to start living. And I know that's so weird. I hope it doesn't make you guys cringe, but I I did. I really did. And it was it's weird because so when I was a teenager, I loved entrepreneurship from a very early age. I loved doing my own thing, making my own money. Um, and I just loved the whole idea of freedom. I couldn't pinpoint it at that point in time. Oh, this is what it means, but I knew that I was the type of person that likes to run things at my own pace and do things that I enjoy doing. Um, so whenever I started college, I took the standard route, started college with my bachelor's. I was still living at home at this point, but I didn't have a job. Um, and I couldn't get a job because I wasn't born here so I at that time couldn't couldn't work I I actually couldn't work because I didn't have papers legally to do so at that point in time and um, I remember being or feeling so out of place just so sad because I wanted to work so badly for some reason, I wanted to make money. Uh, that really was the main reason is there were things I wanted to buy. I was always seeing clothes and things that I wanted to buy and just could never buy them because I couldn't work at that point in time. And I remember what I ended up doing, and stay with me here, but what I ended up doing was I ended up, I was, I stayed up, like I couldn't go to sleep one night and I was laying down in the dark in my room, my room was like pretty small, it was like the size of a closet, and uh, my bed was a, a kid's bed at the time, and it was broken at that, so the right hand side, the leg of it was broken. Um, I think back, and I'm like, that was crazy, because I should have really just pressured my mom to get me another bed, but I never complained about it for some reason, I don't know why. Uh, and it gave me back issues as an adult. So, if you, if you had, like, uh, anyways, I'll go into that. So, <laughs> it gave me back issues as an, as an adult, and 
it's so funny because when I moved out, when I finally moved out from home, one of the things that I that was the most important to me was getting a, a good, comfortable bed. And so I spent money on all these other things, but I think literally the most expensive item that I bought when I moved out of my my mom's house was my mattress and my bed set. So I spent a lot of money on that because I was like, my bed just has to be comfortable. It just has to be. And I think just psychologically, it had an impact on me because I was sleeping in such a crappy bed and I had back issues and back pains all the time. And for some reason, I never really pressured my parents to get me a new bed. So that might have been my fault for not saying anything but yeah it was weird uh but anyways i digress so i was laying in bed in the dark in this little bed with a broken leg there were three windows in my room even though it was like literally the size of a closet it's like three small windows and i remember i had went to the dollar store i bought pink pink see-through curtains for it i was so proud of those curtains i put them up myself and so the curtains were, were down, but they're see-through, so you can kind of still see, uh, like, the sky and the night and everything else. And I was laying there, tussing and turning because I couldn't sleep. And my mind kept racing. It was like this weird rush. My mind kept racing. And what I was thinking about was how to make money because I'm not able to do it in the way that most people do it, which is by getting a job. And so all I could think about was... How to make money and so my mind was ra racing with different ideas trying to come up with an idea in my mind of how to make money and so that same night is so weird but that same night it was about maybe 12 p.m 12 to 1 a.m my heart just skipped the beat and i was like how about i just find a way to sell things online and i got online because i had this like kind of raggedy laptop. I got online, looked it up. eBay had just come out at that at that time. So I searched eBay, looked up, you know, what it was. And, and in two, three days, I had an eBay account all set up and I had ordered tools uh, and phones because I had decided that what I wanted to sell was iPhones. And so what I was doing for a long time is I actually started selling old iPhones like that people were selling off for less of a cost. I would buy it and then sell it for a little bit of a higher price to make a profit off of it. And that model worked for quite some time until I think more and more people started to catch on as to the value of iPhones, so it became even harder to find iPhones that I could buy and then price up for a profit, for a little bit of a profit. So then I had to change my model a little bit, and so what I started doing was I started buying broken iPhones, and I taught myself how to fix the iPhones. Like I just would watch videos and things, and I taught myself how to fix the iPhone. So I would buy the broken iPhones, buy the parts fix them myself to save on cost, and then list them and sell them. So I was doing that for quite some time, and you guys, I was making some good money. <laughs> and I was working from home, and it was so weird because I didn't realize it at the time, but now that I think about it, now that I think back, like, wow, all of my time was going into doing this. So that was my first taste of freedom, right? That was my first taste of being being so passionate about something and and feeling that way about what I do and a path that I've personally chosen for myself so I did that for a little while of course the market slowly changed I um I also had some issues because I had increasingly difficult, dif an increasingly difficult time getting a hold of iPhones, especially at a reasonable rate, even for the ones that were broken. Um, they were often asking for uh, crazy amounts for them. And also it became harder and harder to fix them because 
as the phones evolve and things like that. So I kind of slowed down on that end, especially as school, because I was, I was also in, in school getting my bachelor's at this time, especially as school increased in demand because I was, I believe I was maybe like my junior year. And so I, you know, was packing on the classes. I wanted to make sure that I was, was gonna get down in time and things like that. So I kind of slowed down and eventually I stopped doing it and I finished school. When I finished school, I remember crying in my room the very day before even walking on the stage, I remember crying. And I was crying hard because I was telling myself, talking to myself, and I was just saying to myself, how am I going to work? How am I going to make a living? I can't work because I, I don't have a way of working. Um, and I was on a student visa. We're on a student visa. Um, and then the very next day, things fell into place. And I, I was really nervous. And I, you know, and everything fell into place. So I start wondering, you know, what if I would have been put in a situation where I had to figure it out myself? Would I be a millionaire by now? I honestly believe that I would because I probably would have gotten into real estate. I would have searched so profusely for what I could do to make a living and I probably would have ended up getting into real estate is what I would have done. Um, but Anyways, that's not the direction that I took. I got my bachelor's, I was able to start working, and there in lies, that's when the corporate jobs started for me. I was lied to the whole time, you know? I, I fed into the whole, you have to get a job, otherwise you can't survive, lie. And crazy enough, crazily enough, I got that from the people closest to me, primarily my brother. I was particularly close to my second oldest brother at that time. And I remember crying yet on another day after getting the ability to work. And he came in, he was like, why are you crying? And I was like, because I don't want to have to work for someone else. That just seems horrible. And I was in tears, you guys. And, and those were my literal, literal words because I don't want to work for someone else. That just seems terrible. I keep thinking about it and I don't want to do it. And I was in tears, so dramatic, I know, but I, my eyes were red. I was so scared and I wasn't scared because of like the job or like what job I was gonna get at anything. I was scared because I knew I didn't want to do it. So anyways, a few weeks go by, I walk, get my degree, and I push it to the side and I'm like, okay, that's what I have to do. And I remember my brother's response to me in these exact words were, well, you just have to suck it up and do what you have to do. Everyone has to do it and that's what you have to do to survive. Literally, that was his response to me. And so I took that and I took it in and internalized it completely without even knowing it. Um, after that day, that was it. I didn't like cry anymore, think about it anymore. I just kind of said, okay, well, if I have to go this route and do the eight to five and work, do something that I know that I'll be miserable doing, then I need to be doing something else on the side for me. So I knew very early on, very, uh, I knew very early on that I was going to go get my master's degree because during my associate's degree, I had found out that my passion was called psychology and mental health, and that was the field. So I had a passion. I didn't necessarily know what it fell under or what it was called until my associate's degree. And so I made the decision, like if I'm gonna spend all day doing this, then I need to be working on something on the side that I can build so eventually I don't have to go into the office and work eight to five. I don't want to do that. I don't want to work for someone else. And so that's what I did. I got, I got a job. I got a few jobs, worked a few jobs over the years, corporate jobs. And I'm one of those people that I don't think it's the best thing to stick around at a corporate jobs from years and years on end. So 
I would be at a job when I felt like it was time for me to move on, I move on, you know, and usually that's because of like the culture or the manager. I had so many bad managers over the years, but, um, but yeah, so I did that and I'm skipping over a lot of things. Like, for example, I actually had a job at T-Mobile first while I was trying to figure out how to get into corporate, but, um, so I did that and at the same time as I was doing that, I was working on my master's degree. And so, I was very stressed out for years and years, for, for a few years. It took me about three years, three and a half years to get my master's and complete that. So I was stressed out doing that whole time because I was working full time and also going to school full time to get my master's. That's how desperate I was to no longer have to work in corporate. What I didn't know is that like, just because you get your master's does not mean that that doesn't automatically translate to dollars outside of the corporate world. I got lucky with my choice because my passion just so happens to also give me the option of making good money, doing what I do without having an eight to five and just having my own thing. Because now, of course, I'm a therapist, I'm a licensed therapist. So the license piece, I didn't even know that I would have to get a license at the end of the master's. So I kind of just got like God just put that into place for me, really. Um, so if you're in that same phase, just make sure to ask more questions than I did, for sure. But um, So I did that, went to school full-time, and I was paying at the same time. And I was doing that just because that's how I grew up. Like, my, my parents paid for my bachelor's as I was going along. I didn't really know any other way, so I didn't even bother looking for a loan. Honestly, I think most people go and they look for loans. and. I didn't even bother. It was just almost like an automatic switch, like, well, I need a job in order to pay for the school. And I think I made that automatic switch without even thinking about it because it gave me a reason to go into that job every day. And it also gave me a reason to know and be confident that it would end, the eight to five would end one, one day soon. And so I think I just automatically made that connection. So I paid as I went, finished, got my master's degree not too long ago. And um, I think two years, it flies by, it's crazy. And then, you know, of course I always knew that I wanted to do my PhD. I went right into my PhD. And around that time, about two years ago is when I really started to feel drained and burned burnt out because I did not enjoy the corporate scene. It was exactly as bad as I thought it would be. And every day I kept saying to myself, geez, Louise, like, look at what I'm doing. Working on someone else's dreams when I have dreams of my own makes no sense. And I hated the structure, having to kiss butt and be someone that I'm not and feeling like this manager person has their my future in their hands it just was not for me and i was starting to get burnt out and i remember it was actually um 2019 when i got the last job the one of the last corporate jobs that i had and i ended up leaving there as well and i told my mom i'm not going back to corporate and that was it i never went back to a corporate environment I didn't know what I was gonna do because I had I I had just graduated with my master's degree. I hadn't even taken my test yet, my my state board my board test for my licensing yet. So I didn't, and of course it takes time to transition. So it's not like I had a job on reserve or anything like that. I just told my mom, I'm not going back. And I have bills. I live by myself and things like that. And I I was like I cannot do it. I literally, I don't, I didn't even realize that I was coming on empty until I was on empty, which is so crazy because I real, I knew that I was stressed out. I knew that I was tired. I knew I didn't want to be there. I knew that I don't want my life in the hands of someone else. I don't want to work for someone else's dream. This is the worst way of living. I knew that, but what I didn't know is that I was already on E. <laughs> until I was already on E and I told my mom I cannot do it. Because prior to then, I was very aggressive with my job search, 
my job searches, interviews. I got stupid good at interviews. So I gained a lot of really good skills. I, I'll say that. And I lived well because I was able to make enough money for myself, good money, <laughs> and do things that I wanted to do as well as pay for school at the same time, live on my own, live on my own, things like that. But I was miserable every day. And so I, you know, I just was like, no, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not going back. And my mom was like, so what are you going to do? I was like, I don't know. I remember I took out a loan, a few thousand dollars, because what I was thinking is I'm going to try starting a business. And I've started, I had started businesses on the side as well while working eight to five, none of which had panned out. So to start a business and without having an eight, eight to five or a job or fallback or anything was even crazier because I already have a history of starting businesses and them not paying out. And, um, but I was like, that's, that's what I'm going to do because I'm not going back to the corporate world. And so I, I did that. I actually Ubered for a while too because during this time was the time when I was studying to take my licensing, my board exam and stuff like that. So I signed up for Uber and Ubered for a total of three weeks, two to three weeks. I couldn't do it, y'all. I could not. I was tired all the time. I was like, I, I but just no. And so I stopped Ubering after a little while. After like, I don't even think I made it up to two weeks, but I did it for a while, you guys. And I was like, no, this isn't it either. <laughs> This isn't it either. The people, are, they're so weird, you know? And, um, but I went forward with using the money that I borrowed from the loan. It wasn't a substantial loan. It's like $12,000 or something like that. So, um, took that because I, I, I believed if I'm going to start a business, I shouldn't have to use $12,000 to do it. Otherwise, I shouldn't be starting that business because if I can't afford it, then it would, you know, what would I do? So anyways, I did that, started the business. I still have the business till today. It's a car rental company that I still own till today. And I'm planning on expanding on that hopefully next year. Yay. Excited. It's hard. So, but it's flexible because I own it. So if someone reaches out and they're like, Hey, I want a rental, I have the the choice where I can say yay or nay, blah, blah, blah. But that's a video for, that's another video. And um, so I did that, but that's not how I was, that wasn't my source of income. So my mom was like, why don't you get something within the education realm? Cause you always, you've always wanted to be a professor. You've always wanted to teach, which I have. I no longer want to do that, by the way. I don't, I don't want to be a professor. I, and if I, for teaching, I feel like I can just do that on YouTube and teach people by making videos and whoever wants to watch them will watch them. And so I no longer really want to be a professor. And let me tell you why. That and and that was so the day that I was on zero on zero fuel on empty was not the day that I died, which is what I have my experience in. So I was like, okay, cool. And so I applied. I had a bad feeling about it the whole time, you guys, just because I had already had my mindset to not go back to work for anyone, but this was a government setting job and it was literally the only job that I had applied to, the only one. And I said, well, we'll see what happens here because it's a government job, so it should be better. There shouldn't be all the politics that I had to play in corporate. And also it's more in line with, with my interests. As opposed to what I was doing before, what I was doing before with an HR, I was stupid good at it, really good at it, but it wasn't what I wanted to do in the long term, or it wasn't even what I wanted to be doing. I was doing it because that's what brought me an income. So I was like, okay, let's try it. I applied. I ended up getting that job <laughs> and it was horrible. <laughs> it, the politics in government jobs is even worse than the politics in corporate. That's what I didn't know. And after, after after working there and getting that job, I no longer wanna be a professor because even the professors, I wanted to be an adjunct professor when I was older and retired. Even the professors, they go through so much drama. I am just like, this is not it. So I was dissuaded from that too. And I said, look, I'd much rather spend like after when I retire, as I grow older, Spend my days doing what I want to do, traveling, doing videos, and you know, if I want to put together a program to teach people 
on communication or whatever things people might be interested in, then that's what I'll do. I don't have to do it in this type of a setting that doesn't even really pay you. And there's the politics is 10 times worse than corporate. So bad. So I was shocked. So I was there. I was there for like about 10 to 11 months or so. And then I ended up leaving there, which was a, ble a major blessing. And I wasn't making enough to cover my bills because keep in mind, government doesn't pay even close to what corporate does. So every month <laughs> I was miserable in that environment. It was super toxic. I mean, the team members would even fight with each other. It was nuts. People were quitting all every day. And um, so I was like, wow, right? Um, but I was, I just kept going with it because I'm, I rarely, if ever, I'm the one that pulls the plug just because I can be more strategic if, if they pull the plug, I get more. But anyway, so I was still going and everything. So I did that for like 10 months. And after that, I was like, I do not want to teach anymore. I don't want to be an adjunct professor. I don't want to be a teacher. I just want to like make content that can help educate people. And then the people that are interested can choose to get that content and absorb that content. And I, I love that idea, to be honest with you. Um, but it was horrible. The government turned out to be even worse than corporate. And it, <laughs> you guys, that was my last job. That was my last eight to five job. And that was, that was last year. That was last year during the COVID. And so the COVID happened, they had layoffs. I was one of the ones laid off and it was the best thing that ever happened to me, honestly. Um, I'm so blessed in, in so many things that fall into place without me even thinking that they would. But anyways, they, they that happened and since I had tried that, I had tried this, I had tried so many things, they had a date set where they had told me, oh, on this date, the job is going away. And so they had called me in out of nowhere. Of course, it was unexpected. I didn't see it coming necessarily like they usually do in corporate. They do it in the same way everywhere. And they were like, oh, we have this date. And I said, okay. And for the first two to three days, I was freaking out you guys I was freaking out I don't know why I didn't even I don't even like the job but I just was freaking out I don't know why I was freaking out uh, you know I get like that like you know like I get so I think because we we're in the middle of a pandemic so I was freaking out like we're in the middle of a pandemic nothing's open what am I gonna do type of, type of deal but that turned out to be even more of a blessing that we were in the middle of a pandemic but anyways um, so I was freaking out for the first two to three days and after that I, 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 was, I kept thinking about it and I said, girl, you're acting crazy. You don't even like being here. We'll figure it out. Dip out, you know? And so for the first time ever throughout my whole entire, at this point, eight to nine years of working for someone else, for the first time ever, maybe not eight to nine years, maybe more like six to seven years of working for someone else, for the first time ever, I was, I said, I'm going to choose and strate really strategically choose like when I want to leave, how I want to leave and, and make sure that I get paid for all that time and things like that. Now, every place that I've left, every job that I've left, don't get me wrong, I've left and I've made out really well financially because I make it work to my advantage. But I'm not gonna put that on video on, on what that entails. But this time just felt different. And so what had happened, you guys, oh my gosh. So what had happened was 